Rifle, we spent much of the morning hearing how uh, Philemon has also accommodated the Zambian community here in South Africa, leaving quite a gaping hole in his passing. Most definitely, Ayanda, and we were also picking up from some of the speakers here to say that as much as Philemon had been living in South Africa for a very long time now, his connection with the people of Zambia had not, he had not been separated from his love for, for his country together with people of Zambia. And we also understand that, you know, he used to, as much as he was here in South Africa, used to also check in at home uh, some of, uh, you understand that we, they do, he does have people that uh, admired him in his career as a football uh, star. Allow me to welcome Pastor Kaluba. He will be telling us more. He's also from Zambia. Thank you so much, Mr. Pastor Kaluba. Uh, welcome to Ustream Africa. Maybe let's start with when you received the news about the passing of Philemon uh, Mulalo and the manner in which he passed on. Uh, I got the news in the afternoons of Saturday, the 7th, and uh, when the news came to me, first of all, I was shocked, like anybody can be shocked. Uh, I even asked if he was sick or something, then I was told no, he was attacked. It was quite shocking to me, uh, because last year we met and talked a lot, and I thought even this year we'll have an opportunity to meet and talk again. Mm -hmm. It was a shocking death. And, and your, your relationship with him, you, you were telling me that you've known him for, you know, for more than 22 years. Uh, take us through some of the memories that you created with him and also his history about uh, uh, being a soccer star. Uh, Mr. Filimon Mulala used to play for Mufrila Wanderers. I do remember as a young boy, I was about 11 years, and uh, his name was becoming prominent in football by then and he was part of the KK11, that time the Chipolopolo was called KK11 national team. Uh, in 1984, to be precise, Zambia was playing in the East and Central African Senior Challenge Cup. They played Malawi in the finals, and uh, by that time Zambia had never won any major tournament at all. So Malawi was a big name to Zambia, and when they met we thought maybe we'll lose that game. But I do remember it was Philemon Mulala who scored the brace that gave Zambia the first ever senior uh, cup at, at the national level. Mm -hmm. and, and him coming to South Africa in 1988, coming to play for Kaiser Chiefs, I think ever since the, the news of his passing, everybody that paid tribute, they did mention of how he played along the side of the uh, Max Gomen, Go Maponyana. For those who are watching in Zambia and South Africans, you know, uh, what will be your message to them in terms of the, the love he had for, for Zambian residents, his fans there, together with South Africans and bringing the two countries together? Uh, Mr. Mlala never lost his touch for Zambian football and uh, in particular even his hometown Mufrila. Uh, he spent some time, whenever he went to Zambia, he would go to Mufrila, uh, meet some of the colleagues and chat. And uh, so he was a very passionate footballer, even, at, even if he had gone beyond that level of playing. He was still very much in touch with the Zambian soccer and he, he talked a lot about his team of Lira Wanderers and how passionate he was and some of the interesting moments that they shared there. The, the, sometimes I remember one time it was if last year he was telling us that his team would not pay you when you have lost. So one time he blamed his captain that we had lost. So he went to his captain and told him, you are going to pay me my salary because you are the one who has caused us to lose. That's some of the stories. He came here around 1988, and uh, that time South Africa was still under those sanctions, so he was not, not allowed to play for, for Zambia again, but he still played around, and uh, he was still in touch with us, also both the local soccer here, and uh, he really loved Kaiser Chiefs as well. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he's been laid to rest. How will he be remembered, the people of Zambia, to continue to remember him, together with the people of South Africa? I do think for Zambia, I think there is something that they can do for him. It might be minor, but uh, some things must be done. Just to remember him, especially that he's the man who scored. I know they played as a team, but he's the man who scored the two goals that gave us a cup. So we need to put him somewhere in the memories. I appeal to the Football Association of Zambia to do something about that. Uh, recently, the president of FIFA said we should name 
uh, each country should name a, a stadium after Pele. I think before we name uh, a stadium after Pele, let's think of Philemon Mulala first. He is our own, he is our own soil. And I think also with South Africa, they have got their own memories, especially for the teams that he played for. They can do something to just put a memory for him. Pastor Kaluba, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's indeed when we d you did not know about Philemon Mulala. Now you know a lot about him. I think there are a lot of tributes that we have been seeing from a lot of people uh, remembering the type of a person he was, those that, those that worked with him, childhood memories amongst others, emotional moments that just happened when the coffin was going down there from the children together with their wife. Some of the community members here in Lachtenberg who says that Philemon Mulala contributed immensely to their lives. He was a granddad to Sam, he was a brother to Sam, he was a father to Sam, he was a friend to Sam, and they will continue to remember him for his humility uh, as the kind of a person that he was. Absolutely. Um, yet another instance of someone dying at the hands of a specific breed of dogs in this country. Those, of course, are pit bulls. Rafili Sabuko, thanks very much indeed for bringing us that update. She's left to us there from Luchtenberg in the northwest.